Son of God, the King of Israel. Amen. So main point one, we're going right in because I got a lot of information, a lot of my information. Don't be up on the screen. It's a lot, you know, reading. I have this extra stuff that you can um, study when you go home. So the next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God, when the two disciples heard him say this, he they followed Jesus. And, and so they were, they were pointers. We point. That's main point one. We point. And so, have you ever been talked to somebody and then you talking to them low about somebody and they'd be like this? Who him? <laughs> you'd be like, dude, man. Don't do that. I heard my mom say that on the phone the other day to somebody. It's not a point. <laughs> you know? And I remember, you know, in my younger days, for real, standing on the, you know, when I just do little crimes and stuff like that, I'd be sitting on the other side of that screen like this with six other people and somebody would point and be like, that's him. Right there. I would get pointed out. But, but thank God them days are over. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, up a yard the other day. Give me and my wife something to eat. Soon as I walked through the door, I'm telling you, it's time to get out, y'all. We're above now. Some guy was standing in line. He was like, hey, man. He was like, hey, Joe's pastor. I said, yeah. He said, man, my brother, my brother love you, dog. He was like, dog, he sent me your service, man. Give me give you this, man. I was like, oh, I said, praise God, brother. I was sitting up there like this, like, man. <laughs> All glory to God. He teaches me everything I know. Amen. Amen. God has called us all to be pointers in Christ. And I remember three years ago, I was riding down this block. I had just, what, well, three years, three and a half, and I'm riding down this block, and I stopped the car. This house way on this block. I said, hey, man, what's up? I was like, and he said, hey, how you doing? I was like, man, I'm the pastor of the church in Walker Campus right here on the corner. I said, don't you know you got a bad church right here? And I pointed to the church. He was like, oh, okay. Then, all of a sudden, he didn't show up. He said he gonna come this Sunday. He didn't show up. He didn't come the next Sunday. And so the Holy Spirit told me to go to his house before service one day. And it was probably like nine in the morning. I went and knocked on his door. He said, "Man, you came all the way to my house." I said, "Yes." I was like, "Man, I feel like the Holy Spirit was calling you to come and, and, and be with us." He said, "I promise you, I'll be there next week." That's God read. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> And everything, baptized and been on fire for the Lord, been faithful. And so we should always be looking for someone to, to point to Christ, point someone to Christ by the Holy Spirit's lead. See, that was by the Holy Spirit. You don't just, just, just go around telling everybody. That's how you get tired. That's how people be like, I got burnt out, man. Yeah, because you ain't, you ain't letting God lead you. I was led to him. At first, I used to just tell everybody. I was tired. That night, I'd be like, God. Man, evangelism is led by the Holy Spirit. Listen close. We believe, uh, we, we, I believe to be an effective pointer in Christ to others, point others to Christ. Christ followers have to know who they are in Christ, meaning their identity. They have to know who they are not in Christ. Like, you're not the old you no more. You got to know who you're not in Christ. And they must know what God has called them to do if you want to be an effective pointer. I had to learn that. I was like, oh, you want to be effective, you got to know who you are, who you're not, and what God has called you to do. Yeah. This is really important. This is what makes us effective pointers. And these three essentials are not, when these are not clear to someone, your point has no power. I remember I used to drink, be kicking it, and I knew God was calling my eyes from talking to people about the Lord. <laughs> or people who was drunk talking to me about the Lord, had the power in that. Sound good. John the Baptist's ministry was effective with, with pointing others to Christ because he knew who he was, he knew who he was not, and he knew who he was called to be. John 1 19. It said John writes to the he, he, he John the Apostle uh, writes the words of John the Baptist. Um, he said, Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent 
uh, priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but freely confessed. He said, I'm not the Messiah. They asked him, then, who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I'm not. Are you the prophet? He said, no, I'm not. So John the Baptist knew who he wasn't. You got to understand, I don't know who I am. Because I'm telling you, when you get saved, you be doing right for the Lord. That young man, that player, that player is trying to come back just when girls come around. You know, you be standing like this, and all the feet, all of a sudden, your feet moving like this. <laughs> or girls, or girls, when men come around, you say, all of a sudden, you you standing bow legged like this, <laughs> you doing like this. <laughs> but you belong to Christ. I see girls do it all the time. <laughs> but you belong to Christ. Don't change up. You gotta know who you are. God will be here to use you. Listen close. Walking in the old U.S. Christ followers, you would never understand your calling. You would never receive all that God has for you because everything God has for you is connected to the new you. And that's why we can't get nothing from God. We be thinking like God. God want to release something to you, but you still stuck in the old you. And you say He can't release nothing. Everything he has for you is connected to the new you. John 1, 12, John the Apostle writes, he said, Yet to all those who received him, to all those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Born again by the Spirit. You don't know how it does it, but the Spirit does it. Changes you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Paul writes, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. Behold, the new has come. We ain't got no finish behaving like old, the old man no more. Put this in your back pocket. Satan is attacking, uh, right now is attacking identity and he's attacking gender, gender in our generation. Because, and this is why, because he knows that all that God has for you is connected to your true identity in Christ. If he can make you feel like you a man and you a woman or make you feel you a man and you want to be a woman, he knows God can't give you nothing like that. That's why he liked us out of our identity. Be drunk. Like, these are different identities. All that. You got to walk in the newness of Christ. We are not biological mistakes. God knew who you were when he made you. Continue with them. It's going to continue with John 1. They asked him, meaning John the Baptist, go, go. Being, who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I'm not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. I finally, then he finally said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to the ones who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet. He said, I am the voice of the one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. So John the Baptist, understanding who he was and, and who he was, what he was called to do, made his point to others so effective. Man, there was thousands of people following John the Baptist. He's a powerful man. But when we read about John the Baptist, we look at him as if he's always been effective. He, always, he has always been an effective pointer in Christ. But, but being an effective pointer, corner, a pointer in Christ, it, it takes time. It, it's a process for you to get strong in that area. Because you look at somebody else like, man, that brother's effective, man. He know how to bring people just flock to him. But it, it takes a process. Listen, listen, let me explain. John the Baptist lived in, in a dry desert alone with God for years and he started leading others effectively to Christ. You can find that in Matthew 3, 1. Because he just didn't start off like that, effective. He started off, listen, John just didn't wake up one day and was like, okay, God won't, you know, just knew the whole process. God put him in the desert. That's what the Bible says, uh, locusts and honey, leather belt. But he was there. But that was the place where he learned himself. He learned his calling. He learned everything, you know, what God called him to do. He learned who he was. Because remember, he was just saying that. I'm not. I'm not. It all happened in the lonely place. And we'd be scared to be alone. We'd be sitting at the house. We, we got to pick up the phone. Turn the TV on. I dare you to just sit in silence. This is where we're, we're callings are revealed. This is where identity is made. It made stronger. 
This helps us to understand John the Baptist's life in the desert. Helps us to understand that their process, that their process God takes us through after we receive Jesus Christ in our lives, it can be lonely. It gets soon as you get saved, you be thinking like, man, everything going back. But it's all the time he's sanctifying you. That's what it means. Sanctify me to be set apart, made home. And, and here it is. You, you'll find yourself alone a lot. But it's God. And you'd be like, Lord, what are you saying to me? Waking you up at 3 30 in the morning. You gotta be like, Lord, what are you saying to me? Speak more. You don't wake up at 3 30 for no reason. It's the Holy Spirit waking you up. Because God wanna wanna put some things, help you to identify some things in your life. The desert place, spending time alone with God is where identity and the purpose of God begins to make sense in your life for the strength of leading others to Christ. And so, so it, it, it was in John the Baptist's lonely times that he discovered that he was the voice in the wilderness preparing the way for the Lord. And this is what the Holy Spirit revealed to me about that. I'm the voice in the wilderness calling out, preparing the way for the Lord. Listen, he didn't wake up when he was a kid and just understood that. That's what God showed me, because we were just reading like, John, these men, they was cold. They knew their whole life was coming up and all. No, he learned that in the desert. Just imagine, he's sitting there, and you know, the Jews, they knew the scriptures, and all of a sudden, he looked at that verse, and it was him. He learned, he identified that in the scriptures. I identified who I was, but through people speaking in my life, saying, man, you're going to be a pastor one day, but I looked at uh, uh, Ephesians 4.11. He's called some to be apostles, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. I was like, man, and my heart went like this when I seen pastor and teacher. To equip the saints for works of service. He, he identified that. That stuff is found in a lonely place. That's where it was. I was at Teen Challenge. I got my life together. I stopped drinking and smoking weed and being violent. And God, now I'm just spending time in my room alone. And now suddenly he just started speaking to me. And I, I accepted Christ in my life. And he told me I was a, he was my father. So I, 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 identity came. I was his son and everything. And then I, then I found out I was an evangelist. I found out I was a pastor, a teacher. All in the lonely place. That place was lonely for me. Then you start telling people you ain't drinking no more. Ain't no more drinking in my house. Ain't no more smoking weed in my house. Ain't, we ain't doing that no more. Now watch how fast you lose friends. But that's that's. But the reason why that's good is because that, that that turns into your lonely place. You start to understand your calling and who you are and what God has called you to do. God has called us to. To all to be pointers to Christ, but to be an effective pointer to Christ, you must know Christ as well. You got to have a, the knowledge, man. John the Baptist had a knowing of who Christ was personally that made him an effective pointer. When you point to Christ, I'm just showing you all the, the, the points, man, that you need to know to make you effective. And he knew Christ. He said he wasn't even worthy to untie his sandals. He was talking to his disciples one day. He said, man, the one who was before me came after me. He was explaining him like that. And he said, I would have never known who he was unless the one who sent me told me, the one you baptized, he is the one. And John said, I saw this. I saw him. And he said, he is the son of God. So here it is. He got disciples he poured into before he would, he would let them release them to Christ. But he had a knowledge. I'm telling you, you got to study the scriptures. Yes. Amen. You got to, Paul told Timothy, study to show thyself approved unto God. Work men who need not be put to shame. One who rightly divide God's word with truth. Right. Even in first, uh, second Timothy 4, Paul told Timothy, he was like, look, when you come, bring the books yes. right. and the parchments. Yes. <laughs> Paul was a studier, even though he had revelation of Christ. You got to study the word, man. Get to know who Christ is. Stay out of the Old Testament. I always ask Christ, well, what you read? They'd be like, do the uh, Leviticus? Like, man, what, get out of Leviticus. <laughs> read the New Testament. That's why I said this is the New Testament. That's the old. This is the new. Learn this and it'll help you understand the old. Then you go back and forth, but, but, but stay in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read about Christ's life, and I'm telling you, that's what make you effective. And this is why, because you telling people about Christ, but you don't know him. You don't know one scripture. You leading people, 
trying to lead somebody to Christ and you don't even know him. I dare you to start studying the scriptures. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I was just reading them over and over because I'm trying to see Christ in the scriptures. So when somebody got a question, I can ask them. People have questions today. It ain't Jesus loves you no more. John the Baptist pointed his disciples to Christ twice in the scriptures. He was effective in John 1, 29 and in verse 35 in John 1. In our main text, it was, it was, he, he had an effective point to Christ because two of his disciples left him. And one of those disciples was Andrew. When he was like, behold, the Lamb of God, he was a pointer, a powerful pointer because he knew who Christ was. And Andrew left and followed Christ. And, and Andrew was known as the first age apostle. He was known as the first apostle to follow Christ. And main point two, we bring. We are all called to bring someone to Christ. Listen close. We all have people connected to us that God has personally designed to, for us to bring to Christ. We all have people connected to us. Family and friends and, and even people we don't know. John 1 40, it says Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard that John, what John had said, and he followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was went and find his brother Simon and tell him we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ, and brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. I want to talk about looking at their circumstances, but there's a gift inside of everybody. Yes. God has designed each person with something that will help increase the kingdom of God. He had no 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 uh, recollection that that his brother would be would be the one that the revelation of who Christ was would come and start the church upon what God had told him about because if Peter told him you're the Messiah the Son of the Living God and Jesus said upon that rock upon that revelation I'll build my church. Yeah. You gotta understand that you'll never know who you're bringing to Christ. And here's a couple of nuggets. Andrew was was known in history as the first disciple once again. But Andrew was also Peter's big brother. You would think Peter was the only time much he was mentioned in the Bible. But if, if, if Andrew was a member of our church today, I'm telling you, I would sit back and I would love to hear him preach. Because he, 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 he had a knowledge of Christ. He was under the leadership of John the Baptist. And all John the Baptist was talking about to them was the coming Messiah in detail. And then he ran into the revealed Christ. Check his knowledge out. I would love to hear him speak. But I will also have him on the leader of the flyer team here. Because he, he had a way of bringing people to Christ. Let me prove it. It's important that you, you point people to Christ and bring somebody with them, bring somebody with you to church and to fellowship with them, lead them to life groups throughout the week. Men's group Monday and women's group Tuesday, Bible study, couples, all that. We got all that. It's important throughout the week here at the church. Uh, for the purpose of them encountering Christ because Andrew's life teaches us the person we may bring may be someone that is connected to many souls to Christ. You'll never know how many souls they're connected to. You just put it together. You just That person you brought, and, and you'll never know how many souls connected to them. Yeah. Andrew brought Peter to Christ. And check this out. On the day of Pentecost, he didn't even have a clue. On the day of Pentecost, when they was in the upper room, the Holy Spirit came, filled them with the Holy Spirit, and they came out and they said, Peter, Peter preached, and 3,000 people were connected to him. 3,000 people got saved on the first day on the day of Pentecost. Think about that. You'll never know how many people connected to that one person. Peter would be the leader of the church in Jerusalem. Just think about that, man. You'll never Christ was because of Andrew's uh, bringing. Once again, Andrew brought some Greeks to Christ. No, no, no. Let me go. Yeah, he brought some Greeks to Christ in, in John 4, 6, 4 through 9. He brought some Greeks. And, you know, it was just, it was Jews alone, man. And they brought some Greeks. And here it is. With, and it was, it was a signifying that Jesus was about to die because he said that the, the Gentiles, they're going to kill him. You know, the Roman world. You know, so it symbolized that Jesus got a revelation that he was about to die because here's some Greeks that came to talk to Jesus and a revelation to, was that he was about to die. But guess who when he got the Greeks? 
Philip. Philip was talking to him, and then guess who Philip go get? He said, let's go get Andrew. He said, he went to guy Andrew. Because he's a master. He's effective. He know how to bring people to Christ. So Philip went and got Andrew, and it says Philip and Andrew in turn brought these Greeks to Christ. And guess what? Those Greeks were connected to the cross, and here it is. Guess what? The, the number was great because God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but all that believers shall have eternal life. Now look at this. That bringing was connected to the numbers were great. You see the revelation? Just bringing somebody, you'll never know. It was connected to the world. One time, Andrew found the little boy. They was like, how are we going to feed all these people? It's 15 to 20,000 people out here. But it's always, say, 5,000 men. But it was like 15 to 20,000 people out there. And, and they're like, man, how are we going to feed all these people? And they say, Andrew, when he got to found the little boy and brought him to Jesus. And I'm just trying to show you the revelation that the bringing was, to, look at the, the number. 20,000 people out there. Andrew was a cold dude, man. Just bring it. One person can always be connected to a number that you don't even understand. Andrew was cold. He, he, he always brought numbers to Jesus. He was great with numbers. Now, coming to Christ just started with one person. And Andrew brought each individual to Christ. You would never know who you might bring to Christ. That's why you got to bring somebody. Stop looking at their condition. You'll never know. Because somebody thought there wasn't no hope for you. The next day, Jesus decided to leave from Galilee, finding Philip. He said, he said to him, follow me, Philip, like Andrew and Peter was from the town of Bethesda. Philip found a thing and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets wrote, and Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything come from there? And they you asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathaniel approach, he said to him, Here is truly the Israelite in whom there is no deceit. He said, How do you know me, Nathaniel? Like Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathaniel declared, Teacher, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Main point three. Uh, we witness. Amen. And I'm just giving you head knowledge so you can be effective. It's, it's, it's through knowledge we serve the world. It's through our minds. Filled with knowledge. I was taught early on that telling people about Jesus Christ only was, was witnessing coming up. You know, somebody just, just come on top about it. Jesus loves you. Man, Jesus loves you. And just, just, just can't let up about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You like, man. I think that's why they always preach the kingdom of God first, because they say, man, and they say, why don't preach the kingdom? And then we can lead them to Christ, because here it is. When I tell them about the kingdom, there's no death there. There's peace there, man. Listen, there's no more heartache. There's no more pain. It's interesting. It's the kingdom. And now it, it leaves room for opportunity to, for me to give the gospel. Man, but it's only one way after that. And it's on, it's through Christ, man. But I but I but I gave him faith. I gave him excitement. So, and in these days you gotta make stuff fun just like a kid. I ain't just gonna you know block to nothing that's boring. But I noticed that Philip and that thing already had a relationship. And this, you know, being a witness. And so I'm just telling you, you all want to talk, go somebody just straight talking about Christ. Well, God told me the story I just read to you. Uh, Philip and Nathan, you all have word me. They already have relationship. I said, and and this is, it's so important that you build relationship first. Yeah. Yeah. It'll make your witness more effective when it's time. When God be like, it's time. And I promise you, that person's heart will be so open for you because you build relationship. Y'all done went out to eat. You joking and having fun and and they know you say, but you you got relationship. You don't build relationship. So so Philip was 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 already prepared to speak in that thing of life when it came to Christ. They already had relationship. We must get into the habit of 
building relationships first to earn the right to introduce Christ when it comes when it, when, when it's time because it, it will be a time when I witness what's that noise when, when, when I witness when I witness I start with small talk sometimes you got to understand that you got to start with small talk and when I'm in line at uh Standing in the blood bank when I'm in line, I'm just playing. <laughs> so I don't know, I'm passing that blood bank. So I pay my times. No, for real, though, for real. Listen, when I'm standing in the Walgreens line, I'm going to tell you, effective witness. Here go a young dude standing there. Holy Spirit got it. And I'm like, oh, what's up, man? He'll be like, what's up, man? I don't know, I don't know why I'd be like this. LeBron ain't the go. <laughs> he turned around. Man, he like, yes, he is. I'm like, Jay Mama, no, man. I got him. I'm like, but you got on some shorts. You like LeBron, so why you got on Jay Mama? And I'm just building, kind of kicking it. Just kicking it. And then out of nowhere, like this, when we finna get ready to party, I got my car. I'm like, hey, man, our church is 56 and brother. Woo! Man, check, check it out. We got it. And, and now here it is. I'm building the kingdom. Man, we got a powerful men's group. We got a youth night, man. Even on um, Wednesdays, we got a youth night, man. From, from 6 30 to 8. This is a young man. I, I, I'm a build relationship. Yeah. 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 I will, I'm building. Let me get your number, man, just in case. Gotcha. Let's go deeper. Notice that, that Philip did not tell Nathaniel on top. He could see T he to come and see Jesus. He didn't tell Nathaniel. He just said, We found him. I just need you to understand what the Spirit is saying. He just said, I found him. He didn't tell him on top to come see Jesus. See, in the gap between that was Nathaniel was like, Could anything good come from Nazareth? It's a gap. And I just want you to understand that when, when we found Christ and come to see the Jesus, it was a gap. He just didn't. Up and be like, come on, man, come see Jesus. Jesus. He didn't do it, was a gap. He just he knew he was saved. I'm just telling you, some people in your life don't know you saved, and, and they don't understand that. But before you you say come and see Jesus, build relationship. That's what the gap is for. Because anything come, good come from there? Because they in that place. And that 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 place is is, is for building relationship, for sense of humor, and, and for questions, just in case they have it. And then you can bring them to Christ. That's how the scriptures help us. I'm telling you, when you study the scriptures, they kind of help us. He just didn't all talk, say, come and see Jesus. He said, we found him, then it was a gap. And that's when we come in. At. And that's, this is what an art of the gospel is. This is what an art of witnessing is. This is where we must master the, in the gap area. Because they know you're saved already. He come, come and see is right here. But the gap right here needs to be, it's the art. You got to learn it. Lord, teach me how to evangelize, Lord. Teach me what I should say to people, Lord, when I meet, especially people that, that's Asian and that don't look like you. You'd be scared to talk to people like that. But God got a word for them if you learn the art of the gap. You can't just come to nobody. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You got you to gotta master this, the gap part, to be an effective witness. Father, we love you. We praise you. Give you honor and glory. Don't let a word drop to the ground. If you accept the Christ today, I just want you to say, Father, I love you. I heard your word today. Please forgive me of all my sins. I am in need of grace. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe that you, Father, raised your son from the dead in all power. Holy Spirit, now that I'm clean, watch the very sin. Holy Spirit, come inside of me. Help me. Something God's way. Help. Oh, there's people connected to me. And Lord God, and if you uh, said that prayer, we say it today. And uh, um, take the next step, step hard in the front seat pocket, sign it out. I accept the price today, sign it out. I'll bring my offer and tie box at the end. I'll get in touch with you. But I just want everybody here to know now that you have knowledge of effective evangelism, you gotta use it. You gotta, you gotta master the gap. 
because it's an art. So if, if something is an art, that means you got to go to our creator. You know, Lord, help me with that. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.